Traumatic Elbow Instability. This is from the Orthopedic Trauma Association Core Curriculum Lecture Series Version 4. Um, these are slides by Dr. David Ring. I'm Saka Brahman uh, narrating. So we're going to go uh, through both simple and complex elbow dislocations. <clears throat> so a simple dislocation essentially is uh, a dislocation without a fracture. Uh, that is just a ligamentous injury, so no associated fracture, uh, a complete or near complete capsular ligamentous injury, uh, likely varying degrees of muscle injury, uh, and these things are typically stable uh, after closed reduction. Um, it's pretty uncommon that you have to do surgery on these uh, if they're stable, um, but uh, occasionally you can have a case that's you know, unstable from the get-go or uh, and, and might need surgical treatment. And typically, in order to prevent excessive stiffness, you have no more than two weeks of uh, immobilization. Um, mechanism is typically posterolateral. Um, it can dislocate with the anterior band of the medial collateral ligament intact. Um, so it, it, these typically occur fall and outstretched hand, axial loading, uh, supination, external rotation of the forearm, and um, there can be other mechanisms, but uh, this is typically how it occurs, uh, and typically in a posterolateral direction. Uh, it's the most common type. Um, and y there's often a, like a sort of a circle of uh, injury that occurs with the lateral uh, ulnar collateral ligament failing first, uh, typically uh, by uh, stripping or valsing off of the lateral epicondyle. Um, and then going in a circle with the MCL usually failing last. Um, the, uh, um, it's important to understand the stabilizers. It doesn't go into it too much in the, uh, in the slides here, but you have to remember you have both static and dynamic stabilizers uh, of the elbow. So your static stabilizers are your lateral ulnar collateral ligaments, uh, the anterior bundle of the um, MCL and the and the only humeral joint itself, uh, and then your secondary stabilizers are the radiocapitellar joint, uh, the capsule, and then the muscle insertions um, like the the forearm flexors and extensors, uh, and then some of the other dynamic stabilizers themselves include uh, the muscles, the brachialis, the triceps, uh, muscles essentially crossing over the elbow joint. Um, so getting back to uh, the slide here, uh, you can also have a posterior medial uh, pattern, although it's less common, but uh, more likely to be unstable. So on the radiographs, uh, you want to make sure post-reduction that you have a nice concentric reduction. Occasionally you can have uh, this so-called drop sign, uh, and you can see here that uh, you just does not look, if you draw a line through the center of the capitellum, and you're looking for it to intersect uh, at the, um, I'm sorry, line through the center of the radial head and you're looking for it to intersect the capitellum, uh, you're just kind of not really seeing it. You have these, you have this shadow here and you have this second shadow here. It's not a perfect lateral. Um, but you can get this and it's almost like a pseudo-subluxation of the shoulder. Um, uh, but oftentimes with exercises and over time you can get an improved reduction. I would just say even on this x-ray, um, you know, you, you don't have a perfect lateral. You sort of still have this. Probably that's capitellum there, and you have this second density here. So uh, try to get perfect lateral x-rays uh, to convince yourself that you're reduced or not. So to avoid subluxation or uh, loss of concentric reduction, uh, try to avoid various stresses. Um, try to encourage some active flexion and uh, typically uh, you won't have a problem. So um, you can have an unstable simple elbow dislocation. Um, this can occur in older women. It can also occur uh, as part of high energy trauma. Uh, and, and the case here is that you dislocate and you just can't get it to reduce and stay reduced. Uh, you, you keep getting post-reduction x-rays where it's out um, and in these cases you may have to um, then treat them operatively to restore articular congruity and perhaps even consider uh, 
hinged or another form of uh, external fixation if needed to maintain the reduction because you often don't have any bony constraints to repair and when you're relying only on soft tissue um, repairs sometimes I think an X-Fix can be helpful there. So here you can see in, uh, in this particular case um, uh, simple elbow dislocation so no fractures uh, and in this case uh, there's going to be a repair of the um, lateral ulnar collateral ligament uh, you can see um, uh, here you have uh, mu uh, likely muscle repair that's going to have to be done posteriorly and uh, you know your ligament re uh, repair over here and then like I said you may have to consider external fixation uh, to, make, to sort of uh, neutralize your repair or even cross pinning which is a bailout if you must um, because it's always better to have a stiff and reduced elbow than a subluxed elbow that you now have to try and deal with later on. The stiffness you can uh, work out with rehab or if necessary even do a release but a uh, persistently subluxed or dislocated elbow is very difficult to reconstruct. Um, just one tip by Dr. Ring here was if you're going to use uh, pins, make sure they're large enough and that they exit the cortex here in case uh, they end up breaking and you need to like retrieve them from either direction. Okay. All right, chronic elbow dislocation or chronic simple elbow dislocation is a very unfortunate case. Like I said, this can be very difficult to uh, reconstruct. This is a uh, paper by Dr. Ring and Jupiter uh, showing uh, how in a handful of cases uh, this can be treated in expert hands um, with hinged x um, and letting them scar in uh, for um, uh, as shown in this case here. So just a word about medial collateral ligament insufficiency. Um, this is not quite what we're talking about here so this is really something that it can occur with elbow dislocations but uh, this is something you'll hear about and see a little bit more often as an overuse injury with uh, microtrauma and repetitive valgus stress uh, typically can occur in uh, uh, baseball pitchers. It's sort of the extension of what you get with the little leaguer's elbow and uh, these are um, uh, treated conservatively but in many cases especially in uh, high performance um, throwers, pitchers, uh, this can be treated with a um, so-called Tommy John surgery, which uh, many people know uh, has been successful in getting a lot of uh, uh, athletes back to uh, pitching at near uh, their um, pre-injury level of throwing. But not really what we're going to be talking about as much in the context of this, uh, you know, this uh, injury with elbow dislocations. So um, we're going to be talking a little bit more about lateral collateral ligament insufficiency. Uh, this can occur, and, and this will be a theme we'll continue later on in this lecture, um, but uh, this can uh, uh, occur with um, recurrent simple elbow dislocations. You have insufficiency of the lateral collateral ligament, um, and uh, you can get uh, so-called posterior lateral rotatory instability. Um, Again, remember that the injury occurs as a, sort of in a circle when you dislocate your elbow and the lateral ulnar collateral ligament goes first. It's one of your primary stabilizers to uh, varus and external rotation stress. Um, a lot of times after a patient has had a dislocation, down the road they may complain of discomfort. Uh, they may have uh, pain with pushing themselves up out of a chair, right? So placing their hands on uh, both sides of the chair and trying to get up places this stress and that can cause pain. On physical examination this can be uh, noted as varus instability. Um, they may have what's a so-called lateral pivot shift test um, which is being demonstrated here. Uh, the arm goes overhead, the forearm supinated, you do a valgus stress while flexing the elbow and uh, you try to reproduce a um, subluxation and relocation. Um, so this is a condition that can occur uh, after elbow dislocation and uh, can be treated with reconstruction if needed. 
So what about uh, traumatic elbow st instability with fractures? So we talked about simple dislocations. Now these are so-called complex dislocations. Um, and really the difference is that you just have a uh, fracture, okay? In this case you can see it looks like there's a coronoid, coronoid tip fracture right here and you in this image you can't really see where the radial head is. So by definition complex uh, dislocation is a fracture dislocation of the elbow. Uh, when you have an intraarticular fracture it's typically going to be a radial head, a coronoid, maybe the proximal ulna. Uh, those are the three you're, you're usually going to see. Uh, and in this case you can see here uh, there's a radial head fracture. Um, can't really tell if there's a coronoid fracture. And in this case, you have a proximal ulna uh, fracture dislocation. And you can see, the, as we're going to show, that ulna humeral joint is treated a little differently in each case. So there's some different patterns that Dr. Ring is conveying here that you can get with traumatic elbow instability uh, with fractures. Uh, you can get a uh, dislocation with an articular fracture. Um, you can get an olecranon, or some like to call a proximal ulna fracture dislocation. I say that because, you know, as opposed to an olecranon fracture, which is typically you're talking about that, uh, in these injury patterns, it's really a lot more than the olecranon process. It obviously comes all the way out to here. So some really like to call it a proximal ulna fracture dislocation. But uh, semantics aside, you need to understand that um, that this is a different type of so-called dislocation, right? Because here, the ulnar humeral joint is really not completely dislocated like it is uh, in these patterns here uh, on the left with the terrible triads, for instance. Another injury pattern you can get altogether is um, a varus postromedial rotational instability. And this is when you have uh, certain coronoid fracture types uh, that uh, can render the elbow un unstable um, but in the opposite direction. So, so again, disruption versus dislocation. Just terminology again, but it, it's important to understand because when you think about ligament repair and reconstruction, uh, their situations can be a little bit different in each of these two cases. So you can see dislocation, like you see with the terrible triad, and so-called disruption, but recognizing in the proximal ulna fractures that you don't necessarily uh, have to have uh, complete um, ligament injury, and the ligaments may in fact be partially spared. Okay, so here's another example of that. Um, radiocapitellar joint, clearly dislocated, proximal ulna fracture, uh, but um, he's suggesting to you that uh, your ligaments uh, are potentially still partially spared. All right, so we'll kind of like try to group these a little bit differently. So you have your sort of dislocation injuries on the, on the left here, your terrible triads, for instance, and then you have these proximal ulna and varus postromedial instability um, situation here on the right. So I'm going to pause here and um, we'll get a little deeper into the terrible triad uh, radial head and coronoid injuries in the next video. Thank you.